folks, how's it going out there? Gun Psychiatrist here. In this two-part series, we're going to show you how to build and construct a custom Kydex holster. Now, if you've been following along with any of our video pages like GunStreamer and YouTube, you'll know that this press sitting behind me was actually constructed specifically to create this video. And in this video, what we're going to show you are the tools and equipment that will be used in the building process, the building and construction of the mold, and of course, the press design after it is made in the oven. So first and foremost, you're going to need some form of a mold. Now, whether that's going to take its shape as an actual pistol or if it's going to take its shape as a dummy gun. Now, a word of caution in what the folks over at Holster Smith have told me is it's not ideal to use actual real firearms for holster making just because you can with the temperatures of the kydex and everything like that you run the risk of actually damaging your firearm this is just a standard cutting mat you can get it at walmart that's gridded out and lined out so um, i prefer to use these here what we have is we have a mold for making a taco holster check that chamber okay and so this would just simply slip on right over the center and uh, we're, we I got a few gaps in here that I'm gonna have to fill so I might put some tape around those but this is what would uh, be used to make our offset that's built into the taco style holes I have an extended magazine release on here that might cause interference so I have a piece of wood that's gonna be used to help build and construct this mold that way, when I pull my gun from the holster, I'm not going to trigger the magazine release in any way that could possibly drop my magazine out in the event that I need to use my firearm. This is a safety block that I've made, which is inletted to accept and slip right over that. That way, we have no interference with the rear safety and the slide release. Then, of course, at the top, we're going to have our sight post. So, we'll run tape around this. And that's really all I'm going to need for this gun. This will, this uh, rail on the front here is an aftermarket. This is an old, very old 1911. So this rail is aftermarket. I installed it. So all we'll end up doing is just running some tape around there. And then, of course, this piece right here is going to sit like this because I am making an outside the waistband holster because what this is going to be used for is the belt clip is going to sit on top of this. And it will be used to raise that up off of there so the... Uh, the screws and rivets and stuff that go in there that hold the belt clip on will not mar or scratch the gun in any way. That's all the blocking that you're going to need. We're also going to need some tape, and I have some really low-tack masking tape. And then we have standard blue painter's tape. We're also going to need a ruler or some type of straight edge. I also have one of these that I can hook to the edge of my bench to keep the line straight and everything straight. You're going to need a toaster oven or some form of an oven to cook the Kydex in. And... You're also going to need a laser thermometer. Of course, if you need your vape pen and a tape measure, it's probably handy to have that as well. The first thing we need to do to begin any holster making project is we have to start blocking off portions of the firearm that are going to cause pinch points or binding points in the holster. What I'm talking about is your front sight. That can slide release your safety, your mag release button, your trigger mechanism, uh, this rail right here. All these points, especially this, the uh, takedown pin, all these points can lead to pinch points or binding points inside the holster. And what we need to do is take this blocking that we have here, pre-made for the gun, and position this on the firearm and build those areas up so when we thermoform the holster, close-up look of what all this blocking looks like. I 
again, the reason this is so critical is because you could, in essence, thermoform pinch points into your into your holster that are going to cause issues with drawing and holstering the firearm. So it's critical to read your gun and understand everything that's going to create a pinch point. If there's a protrusion out here, it has to come all the way back until it, it, it finds a higher point on the firearm that's not going to interfere with it, especially with like flashlight devices. If you had one of these on here, this would have to really build up around these areas on each side of the gun. Um, if you go online to holstersmith.com and check out all of their molding props that they have, you will see just by looking at the pictures of those molding props, all the work that goes into preparation of the molds, especially the prepped molds, because those molding props that are prepped, they have all this stuff already done for you. And that's like what I have over here with the Glock 19 Gen 4. It comes already prepped. So there's a lot of work that goes into it. And one thing I could give, a piece of advice I can give out there to everybody, don't throw all this stuff away when you're done with it. Save these prepped pieces of wood because if you ever get another gun down the road and you don't have a dummy gun for it, all your uh, blocking is already made. So you just literally fasten and go. So Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut the kydex and we're going to stick it in the ovens. So our temperature range for Kydex is going to be somewhere between 330 to 350 degrees. That is going to be about the ideal perfect thermoforming temperature. So what we need to do is insert this into the oven and monitor the temperature. Alright so here it is in the press. There's a little too much going on there to uh, really uh, <laughs> film it it's just it's a process that has to go really quick so unfortunately I was unable to get that on camera but here we are it's it's thermal forming it's setting the press we're gonna leave that set up for a few minutes and then once it cools we'll uh, rip it out of there and see how we turned out so here we have it looks really good We're going to go ahead and set this off to the side and then we're going to begin our magazine pouch. So the magazines are going to sit just like this in the magazine pouch. Let's go ahead and get them in the oven. how we turned out on the Glock 19 pancake holster. And would you look at that. That is great retention. So we got somewhat of an assortment of holsters here. So we have magazine holsters, we got a Glock 19 pancake, and then we have a 1911 full-size taco. So those are the three holsters that we made today. All right, so that's gonna be it for this week as far as the progress we're gonna make on these holsters. Uh, I got some other stuff I gotta do. So next week I'm gonna drop part two where we're actually gonna make the holsters We'll cut them out, sand them down, rivet them out, and get them fully completed, and then I will actually wear one so you can see what it looks like. Really, the important thing was sketching it out, and honestly, to me, I think either what makes or breaks a holster maker is how good they are at drawing the designs. 
So we're going to see how these turn out. I don't know exactly how they're going to turn out just yet. I like sharp corners, not necessarily 90 degree angles, but I like angles. So what I have now might actually change by the time I start go to cutting it. The biggest thing that I'm doing is I'm leaving everything slightly oversized. I believe in measure twice, cut once. So if I don't like the shape that it's taking, I can, I'm leaving enough play for me to go back and actually trim it down to where I like it. But again, we made two types of holsters today. We made two pancake holsters and we made a taco holster. So now I have the best of both worlds and the retention on this pancake holster is just absolutely insane. I'm really, really liking it. So that's, that's really good. The 1911 holster is gonna take a little work because it is a taco holster. It's not gonna get as tight, but this was an experiment. This is the first time I've ever made holsters. You see in that I get pretty decent retention once I install the squeeze points where the rivets are going to go. So, all in all, for the most part, I like how everything turned out. Right now, just draw out your designs if you're following along or doing this at home. Just draw out your designs to where, honestly, you think they're going to look best and two, where they're going to feel the best. So, if there's some points in there that need to be drawn so when you're drawing your pistol, you can make the adjustments down the road too as well. So... Anyways, thanks for watching, folks. If you found it helpful, please hit the subscribe button right here. I appreciate y'all watching. Uh, I also appreciate the stream of comments from the followers out there saying, gosh, my channel needs more followers. Well, thanks to Google and all the other sensors out there that don't like what the right has to say and, of course, hate guns. Well, my channel's censored. The, the reach is limited. And honestly, at the end of the day, I just do this for fun. I care more about quality than I do quantity. So... For those of you out there that are watching, I know that you're watching all these videos and I really appreciate you giving me your time to watch what I'm doing here. So, so once again, thank you. I'm the Gun Psychiatrist signing off and God bless America.